Glory to God. Lord, that was powerful. Praise God. Somebody just lift your hand and say, Thank God, I'm free. Come on, say it like you mean it. Thank God. this time, normally I, I, I hit heavy on the hip-hop artists and the movie stars and all those type of things that, that drag our attention away from God, but God told me tonight to focus on the family. Focus with tonight's focus, so you don't see a whole lot of high-powered slides with, the, with rappers and all that kind of stuff. He told me to focus, focus on the family because he's after something. He's after deliverance. He's after something, and in order to do that, I'm going to have to go in the trenches tonight. Just, just for a few minutes, just for a few minutes, we're going to go in the trenches tonight, and we're going to see what the Lord has to say. I believe that we're in a generation of cycle breakers. Oh, my God. We're, in a, we're, we're living in a generation with these babies, and some of us older people are going to break some cycles, going to destroy some bondages, and are going to change the trajectory of their family forever. Forever. But we've got to begin somewhere, and we're just going to, going to walk through these, and we're going to see what the Lord is saying to us. Praise God. Dare to be different. My assignment tonight is to encourage you to dare to be different. And also to warn you that there are things that could potentially staunch or stop your growth and development. He told me to tell you, dare to be different. But real quick, if you sit beside somebody, just tell them, just be different. Just be different. If they didn't look at you, that was the wrong one. Turn, turn to the other side. Tell the other person, just, just be different. And I say that because we live in a society, we live in a culture where everybody's trying to be like somebody else. Lil Wayne put on some tight pants and it, and it stopped right there. All the little guys going out there get some tall tight pants, pulling them up, trying to be like Lil Wayne. If Beyonce or Rihanna, someone puts on a shirt style, all the girls run out to do it. And we're trying to be the next great somebody else when God has called us to be. Did you not know that you are unique? You are unique. When God made you, he broke the mold. Ain't nobody else going to be like you. But you won't know that if you spend your life trying to be like somebody else. Don't be the next great somebody else. Be the first great you. And I have to warn you tonight that there are things that are in your path that are 
that have been put there by the enemy to stop your growth and your development. So the term cycle breaker, the term cycle breaker refers to a person that God chose to intentionally change generational family patterns. A cycle breaker is a person or people or a group of people that God strategically chose to break the cycle that's going on in your family. And if you believe that, you just raise your hand and say, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. That means God chose you to change things. God chose you to be the first one to go to college, the first one to finish college, the first one to be a millionaire, the first one to do something great. God might have chosen you to be the first to do that. A cycle, beloved, is a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order. So anytime you're seeing the same thing happen in your life or in your family from year to year, it is a cycle. If you see something that keeps reoccurring over and over again in your house or with your cousins and your aunties and your uncles, it is considered a cycle. And cycles are strategically planted by the enemy in the hearts and the minds. All he really has to do is start the cycle because he knows we will perpetuate and keep it going. So if you keep saying the same things over and over again, it's a cycle. Let me show you a few. Poverty can be a cycle. Uh, let me show you. Oh, poverty can be a cycle because if grandmother was poor and didn't know how to handle money, she didn't teach her grandson how to handle money, so thereby he couldn't teach you how to handle money, and the cycle just perpetuated itself. And poverty, beloved, is a cycle. Suicide and depression and insecurity can cycle itself from your parents down to you. Okay? Addictions, divorce, rape, sickness, diseases, inherited ways, trauma, stress, anxiety, even bitterness can be considered a cycle. And what God is trying to say is that you have to first recognize if I'm in a cycle. Come on, right. Recognize, am I doing the same thing that my mama did at my age? Am I acting the same way that my dad did? Look, it's so crucial that even when you go to the doctor, the doctor wants to know what's in your family. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have, did, did your dad have this? Did your, did your mom have this? They don't just diagnose you, they diagnose your bloodline. Yeah. Yeah. Because they know certain things flow down the bloodline, and if they had it, then you are most likely going to be fighting the same thing that they fought. All right, toxic generational cycles. Anybody know what toxic means? Anybody ever been in a toxic relationship? Don't raise your hand, don't raise your hand. <laughs> toxic relationship is when you love her and she love you, but y'all can't get along. Y'all yeah. yeah, first met, you had the googly eyes and you were talking about how good it was and now two months later y'all are at each other's throat. Tell your neighbor, that's toxic. That's toxic. That's a toxic relationship. There's also toxicity in bloodlines. Oh my God. These tricks and proclivities always can be passed down without knowledge from the giver to the receiver. So for instance, if mom and dad are always arguing, always fussing, always at each other's, and we, we as parents think we're slick, we'll, we'll shut the door and go in another room and think they can't hear what's going on. But the atmosphere that's created, yeah, they don't have to hear the argument to know that there is an argument. Because arguments create atmospheres, and the dangerous thing about that is when children are in their formidable years, and they hear and see constant bickering, fighting, and arguing, their young minds are developing, and they're believing that this must be normal. And they will subconsciously, when they get old enough to date, find somebody that hits them like daddy hit mom. I ain't going out looking for them, but their spirit, their, their atmosphere, their aura will seek something that was comfortable to them in their formidable years. If they're always around drug, drugs, always around alcohol, always around certain things, it creates an atmosphere. The children in their formidable years are pliable and they affect to anything that they see or experience. 
That's why you have to be careful of what atmosphere has been created. Somebody say in my house. In my house. You have to be careful of the atmosphere that you create in your house. And believe it or not, children know when you're faking. Y'all don't think they talk about y'all, but they do. After church every Sunday, they say, Lord, that girl done fell down again. Oh, yeah, they'll tell my own parents, she just cussed me out on the way to church. Why is she in tongues right now? Y'all don't think they talk about you. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They say they've been faking in church, but at home I get the real deal. Because you created a cycle and an app. Let, 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 let me give a disclaimer. Let me give a disclaimer before I go any further because it gets deeper. There should be no repercussions for anything that I say. <laughs> let your child free to say yes and hallelujah and yes. Let them be free. No, no repercussions. We're going to go there tonight. We're going to go there. So let your babies, let your babies be free to say what they want to say and feel how they want to feel. Okay? No repercussions. If they, if they do something to y'all, I'm going to give y'all my number before I leave. Y'all see, I don't want y'all to sit here and say, Lord, he's talking about my mama, but I can't say that. I want you to be free. God is after something tonight. I'm trying to tell you, God is after some deliverance. He wants some breakthroughs with the babies tonight. So we've got to go a little bit deeper in the trenches. Let's do the work. Amen. What happens is when children are developed in toxic cycles or toxic families or toxic relationships, they regress in their minds and their feelings because they feel like they can't trust us as their parents or their guardians with how they really feel. So they will become a shell of who they are just to fit in with who you want them to be. Oh my God. They feel abandoned and judged by us because the moment they make a mistake, we go high and to the right. Right? The moment they make a mistake and, and when we, we feel like it was something, they should have been smarter than that. You're better than that. You're smarter than that. Why did you do that? And we go high to the right and they shell up, they turtle up because they feel like, I can't tell mama nothing else. I can't tell daddy. And let me tell you, when my daughter, she going to kill me. My, my daughter first started liking boys. And she came out, she felt free enough to tell me that she was liking boys. Me and my crazy self, I said, oh, Lord, Jesus, my baby, no, no, you like boys. Because I thought she was too young, I didn't want her to get pregnant before she got married. I said, oh, Lord, and I went high to the right, and she turned up, stopped talking to me for a long time. Because I went high to the right to something that was normal for a girl to like a boy. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but, but I, I, I had to come to myself and say, it's normal for her to like boys, it's normal for boys to like girls. What I should have done is sat down and talked to her about what it's like to like a boy, what it looks like for a boy to like you. I redeemed myself because from then on, I told her how beautiful she was, how pretty she was. I kept money in her pocket. I told her she's the queen of my heart. I told her everything that this little Johnny come late to try to tell her. When he tried to tell her, no, I already heard it. My daddy done told me. I know I'm pretty. I can buy my own happy meal. You ain't got to buy me nothing. I know who I am. But it starts, it starts there. You got to tell them how beautiful they are because Jojo going to come and try to tell her how pretty she is. And boys are predators. Because the moment they told the little girl how pretty she is, you're like, daddy. Because he knows she's never heard it before. He knows daddy hadn't affirmed her mama's not pulling her under her breast and telling her how beautiful she is. And when they find a weak link, they go after it. So that's why we got to listen. And you'll be surprised at what children have to say. If you have to actually sit down and talk, let them let them exhale to you and really talk and be themselves, then you will be surprised at what they really have, what's really on their minds. There's a lot going on in these babies' heads. And we as adults, we feel like, well, we didn't go through that. Why are they going through that? But I want to tell you, beloved, that they are going through stuff that we didn't see until we became adults. There, uh, there is a de- oh my God! There is a demonic warfare coming against this generation because he realizes that if they ever get both feet 
on the ground, if they ever get their feet under them and they know who they are, that his kingdom is going to be torn down. We are thinking revival is going to come from the bishop or going to come from a big name. No revival to come from them babies right now in the front room. Revival will come from that boy that seems like he's not interested in church. Revival will come from that boy because the spirit of the Lord is going to heal. And you ain't seen the praise until you see the praise from a child. When a baby gets used to start praising God, you better get out of that way. When a baby lifts their hands and says, Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. You can even see the glory. The blood that came on the glory, the glory is going to fall. But don't expect for them to praise like we praise. They are adamantly opposed to our plastic praises. Because they see what happens when we go home. So they say, we ain't going to pray. I'm not going to praise God until it's for real. So when you see a young person praising God, it is, it is a for real praise. But what they do is they digress. They digress. Y'all see now. So I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to teach and not preach. They digress and they feel like they can't talk to us anymore. And in the absence of talking to the parents, they're going to talk to somebody. So what happens is they begin to talk to Jojo, Ray Ray, John John, Jenny from the block. And all these other folks about stuff they should be talking to you about. So when you grow up in a house that has manipulation, criticism, control, controlling behavior, I must be hitting something because my spirit ain't going crazy. Dismissive behavior, a sense of competition, unreasonable punishment, and unpredictability that is an environment for the child to turtle up and not be who God has called them to be. Can I manipulate your child? You cannot over-criticize your child. You can't control them no matter how much you want to. And then for every controlling parent, just take a walk back in time when you were their age. You'll say, baby, you're doing good because I was, <laughs> I was a lot worse than you were. You cannot dismiss them because they're children. You cannot have a sense of competition because your child is pretty and you are over the hill. You can't be mad at your daughter because she looks better than you. <laughs> Unreasonable punishment. Even in the judicial system, the punishment fits the crime. Now, I'm not for or against whoopings. But the punishment should fit the crime. <laughs> and y'all hear what I'm saying? The punishment ought to fit the crime. And if you are on that whoops, don't whip your child in anger. Don't whip your child in anger. You make me sick and get on my nerves. I told you. Because they're not learning a lesson from that type of chest pot. All that is, is a beat down from mom and dad. So what happens is, in the absence of them being able to look up to mom and dad or look up, that the, the rappers start teaching our girls how to be. Because they look up to them and they identify with their beauty and their ambiance and how they flow. And you'll be surprised how many children want to be like Nicki Minaj or want to be like Beyonce. And they, they look to them and they are striving to be like them. But that's what happens when the relationship is severed in the household. When it's separate between mom and daughter, son and father, then that's when you start seeing them acting like what they see on the television screen. And now our boys are identifying with people that are broken just like they are. Uh, one thing you, I want to tell you guys about all these rappers that you guys listen to or like and love or know their life story, know all the lyrics, is that 99% of it is their skill set. That most of them didn't come from any hood. Most of them have two parent homes. Most of them have a skill set to write because they know that if they fake it long enough, then you are going to try to be like something that they're trying to be like. And believe it or not, you're broken and they're broken and you're following in their brokenness. And I want to tell you that if 
these people worship Satan. And their lyrics say so. Their lyrics say that they worship Satan. That their, that their lyrics are about guns, violence, drugs, and sex. And, and, and now in the modern day hip hop, Satanism is at the forefront of what they're saying. So if they're worshiping Satan, you know all about them. And you can quote all of their lyrics. Then you're worshiping the God that they worship. There's no way around it. If they worship Satan and you worship them, then you worship their God. And this is one of the reasons why children sit up in church and can't feel the presence of God because they had the iPod in their ear all night with no Uzi Vert and a, a Playboy party and all these other guys that are spitting devil demonic lyrics in their soul, in their very souls. And it is difficult for them to feel God when the enemy has been in their ears all week long. It is difficult for us as adults. It's just, as we as adults, we can fake it a little better. But the children are saying, I'm not going to fake it. I'm not going to go in there and act like I, I can feel something when I don't. I'm going to sit here and wait for it to be over because I have a date with my iPod. And, and, I, and I, if, I, if, I, if I thought about it, I would have brought some of the lyrics. I would have put some of those up there. But some of the stuff, you ought to check some of these lyrics that these guys... I, did, I played a video in the last uh, session we had with Playboy Cardi. And, and who knows who Playboy Cardi is? Not many of them. Who knows who Nicki Minaj is? Okay. Nicki Minaj did a whole concert with an inverted cross as her background. The inverted cross is the universal sign of Satanism. Uh -huh. Now, if, there, if it was just innocent music, would there be a reason for the inverted cross? And you will find that most of them, they will, they, because the enemy always needs a sign that his worshipers are still worshiping him. So they have to do those things to show that they're still worshiping him. And then they get you that are in the concerts or buy the, the, the records or CDs or, or MP3s to do the same thing. The Bible says, do not lend your members uh, to unrighteousness. Right. So the moment you start waving your hands and, and lending your voice to those lyrics, you have lent your members to unrighteousness and you are worshiping at the feet of the enemy by singing those lyrics that were demonically inspired. Wow. Amen. Let me keep moving. Mm -hmm. Researchers believe that exposure to traumatic experiences can modify even our DNA, wow. resulting in trauma that's passed down mm -hmm. to offspring for generations. Mm -hmm. That mental illnesses or things that don't get dealt with have you will have a tendency to pass those things down to your children. Mm -hmm. And then if they don't get free, they'll pass them down to their children. Everything is not learned. Some things are inherently passed down to the next generation. Anybody know who that is? Rod Wave. Rod, oh, they're not, they're not going to talk to me. I told y'all, listen to them babies. Rod Wave, is a, he's a singer and this guy is mentally depressed. Every single song he sings is about who hurt him, who broke his heart, who did this and who did that. But he is popular because he speaks the minds of what the children want to tell us. There are things that he sings in his lyrics that speaks directly to the heart and the mind of the children. But it is the saddest thing stuff I have ever heard. He's got dope beats, but the lyrics are sad. But he speaks the minds of what the children actually want to say. The enemy uses toxic traits coupled with chemical imbalances to manifest mental illnesses. Now, mental health, beloved, is vitally important. And we have just started talking about mental health in the years, in the recent years. But mental health, you will be surprised. Researchers say one in four people have a mental incapability. One in four. But mental health is so vitally important that the enemy is now using it as a weapon against the body of Christ. 
Now you find panic attacks. Anybody know what a panic attack is? Your heart starts racing. You start feeling some kind of way when there's no present danger in sight. And it comes out of nowhere and then it goes just as quickly. Anybody know what a phobia is? Phobia is something that you are more than just scared of, but it debilitates you to the fact that you don't feel like you can move. And believe it or not, some of us have created phobias in our children. Anybody ever, anybody ever had a roach thrown on them? And now you are scared to death of insects. Because somebody, Uncle Joe, popped the roach on you when you were younger. But phobias are real. There, there are people that have a phobia of closed spaces. A phobia of being out in public. And believe it or not, children have anxieties above and beyond what we can imagine they have. We think the boy is just mean or just don't want to talk, but he has a social anxiety to where he's uncomfortable around other people. And stuff that we take for granted, people are literally struggling with every single day. Anxiety disorders, bipolar disorders, PTSD. Post-traumatic stress syndrome is not just the person. It doesn't just affect the person. It affects those who are around him or her. And when someone has a post-traumatic stress, then everybody around them is affected by it. And if they're not careful, he'll pass that down to his babies too. Depression is real. And depression is not something you kids know what depression is. Anybody feel depressed sometimes? None of you feel depressed at all. What about you adults? Any of you adults that will feel? <laughs> Depression and also suicide. Suicidal thoughts and tendencies is real among children, youth, and young adults. It's so real that it is in some of the lyrics that are being listened to. One of my favorite artists when I was coming up was Tupac and Biggie. And every other song they made was about an untimely death. Tupac made one song, I See Death Around the Corner. Biggie made a song, You're Nobody Till Somebody Kills You. And I didn't know it, but I was quoting death all in my spirit by singing those lyrics, I see death around the corner. Gotta stay high while I survive. Man, why well, still know the lyrics? <laughs> hey, Y'all pray for me. <laughs> Praise God. I'm human. Traumas and triggers. Traumas and triggers. A trauma is a deeply distressing or disturbing experience. A trigger, the term trigger refers to the experience of having an emotional reaction to a disturbing topic. Trauma is something that you've gone through. The trigger is what brings it back and makes it feel like it just happened. That makes sense? That makes sense? All right, there are two types of triggers. There's an internal trigger. An internal trigger comes from within the person. It can be a memory, a physical sensation, or an emotion. An external trigger comes from the person's environment. It could be the person, place, or thing. An external trigger is a smell or you see somebody or if something happens that reminds you of what did happen. That's an external trigger. And sometimes people are triggered by things that they didn't know that was a trigger until it happened to them. The internal trigger happens on the inside. The external is when you step into a place and it makes you feel some kind of way because it reminds you of a trauma that you experienced when you were younger. Mm. Before you play this, before you play this, this is going to trigger some of you. This is going to trigger some of you. But I'm playing this because you need to see, I needed to see this, and I believe this will change some things when you see it play.
Yeah, because you want to be grown, man. You ain't grown. You sit up here, don't that way. You ain't got no cell phone. You don't go nowhere. You don't have no event. You don't even keep your room clean. You don't even got to take care of your own personal hygiene. Come on, man. You try to be with a boy down with a boy. Come on, man. You don't even want to clean yourself properly. Yo, sister, four years younger than you got to tell you how to change your pad and tell her, man, come on, man. I tell you, what the f*** is As I said before, I'm not a proponent for or against chastisement. But in my humble opinion, that was a beat down. In my humble opinion. And then and, and I say that because she downloaded Snapchat and wanted to talk to boys on Snapchat. And I counted, she took more stripes than Jesus did. And I know and I, I, I expect mixed emotions right now. I feel you, I feel you. But this is what I do, this is what I do. I feel you. How do you think the mindset of that girl is going to be from now on? Do you think she learned the lesson? The whole, he wasn't just whipping her, he was talking in a condescending manner to her. Talking bad, you don't know how to, to change your pad. You know, your little sister got to teach you how to change it. You know, he's not he's not explaining to her what he wants while he's chastising her. And then there's somebody else holding the phone. Now, I've had whippings like that, but wasn't nobody holding the phone. It wasn't a public thing to send to you, and he sent it to her friends to further embarrass her. When I saw that, I was like, wow, this, this is difficult to watch. I saw some of you start turning your heads down and looking away because it was a little difficult for you to watch. It's different when you're in the position of authority than when you're in the position to receive. It's different to, it's difficult to watch. It was difficult for me to watch how hard and how many times he whooped that girl. And again, I'm not for or against. But the punishment has to fit the crime. So now this is a traumatic event that this girl has experienced. And there's no way she's not going to feel that for the rest of her life. You understand what I'm saying? Tra transparent moment. I used to whip my kids. I was not angry and whipping them like that, but I used to whip my kids. I stopped a long time ago, not because I saw the video or anything like that, but just I transitioned into a different type of way of disciplining them. But when I saw that, I had remorse for how I used to whip my kids. Because I do not believe, now that I think about it, that the punishment always met the crime. So now, I've got to deal with the fact that I may have caused trauma in the minds of my babies. I'm being transparent, you know. If the Lord is going to get something, i got to be first partaker. And I have to live with the fact that I might have caused some trauma in their lives because I didn't just whip them. I probably went to the other side and, and abused them. So now I've got to deal with the fact that I've caused trauma and maybe some triggers in their lives because I got a whipping, so you get a whipping. Whoopers was handed down to me, and I got them, and I don't, I don't believe none of mine fit the crime. <laughs> um, no, no but when I got but it, it just didn't match. Well, I just don't think he should have whooped you like that. <laughs> but it was handed down, and I thought that is, that is how you discipline children. You discipline them when they make a mistake, you put them on the bed, and you whip them into submission. You whip them until they be what you want. You whip them until they act like you want to act. You whip the child out of them and make them adults when they're still a child's age. I know the Bible says spare the raw rod for the child. 
But there has to be some type of discipline even while you're chastised. And there's a grown person in here even tonight that I just triggered you of some traumatic event that you have gone through. We just keep on, we got it. But we as adults and you guys as children, we've got to come to a place where we know that God is above everything. And if we made a mistake, we've got to have the foresight to go back and say, man, I might have been wrong with that. I apologize for what happened. I didn't mean for it to be that way. And then we've got to find a way to reconcile and deliver our children from childhood traumas that we have had a direct hand in their lives. I'm going to stand a whole lot of hand claps and make right there. We all give me a few more minutes. Stand up there. Stand up there. Now come here. Hallelujah. I apologize. What way I put y'all. I went overboard. I was thinking they crying. work my way to get us out of the trauma that I may have caused in y'all's lives mm -hmm. by doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Children at these ages, they should be free. There should be no anxiety, no stress. They should be running around the house, tearing the house up, running out in the yard, have friends. We should not try to make our children adults before their time. Children make mistakes. Children do bad things. Children are going to go the wrong way. This that that is that just comes with being a child. But what we've done is we've handcuffed and shackled our babies and put them in bondage and make them walk like this and talk like this and be like this when that's not really who they are. In their shells of who they really can be. We can't blame them for everything. Some things they do is just the fact that they're children. And then we've allowed the system to come in and diagnose our babies with ADHD this and bipolar that and anxiety pills with this and all these things because they're just children trying to live the life of a child. And now some of us are grown and we're still dealing with the trauma that we had as a child. Oh yeah, there's so much that are adults that are still dealing with childhood traumas. And then you add poverty and abuse and fatherlessness and all of these different things and the enemy begins to have his way. And then we, and one thing about it is we still bring them into church. We still put a mic in their hand. We still are, are licensed or ordained them. We still put them on the instruments. We still line them up on the praise team and then brokenness is singing to brokenness. I see that. But it's a whole cycle. It's a whole cycle because we'd rather you look and act right than to be right. So now we've got preachers that are broken. We've got singers that are broken. We've got musicians and apostles and prophets and bishops that are broken. And the church as in a state of chaos because the blind are leading the blind and brokenness is trying to fix brokenness and everybody's in the same pot together needing some form of deliverance. So that's what the Lord is after tonight. I told you it's a little different. It's not flashy and fly like, it, like I normally do but God says stop. Stop this time. Just this time stop and speak to the heart. Speak to the heart. 
Because God wants something. It's time to break the cycle. And the only way to break the cycle is to be honest and real. Somebody say with myself. With myself. With myself. You have to be real with yourself. That if we continue on in this same pattern, in this same way, we're going to raise up a whole other generation. And they're going to take the mic. They're going to do great things. But they're going to minister broken. But God wants, oh, I'm still trying to go through these slides. God wants deliverance. True, authentic, real deliverance. God wants the child to come up and say, I need to be delivered. I got trauma. Stuff you said and that video, something you said, it, and it just did something to me, and I want to be free. I want to be free. Because God is not after your ministry. God is after your heart. He wants your heart strength to be full and free. So we've got to go into trenches and we've got to rewind back to some stuff that we might have pushed away and think time is just going to heal it. Time don't heal it. Time don't heal it. Time just pushes it further down. But the weed grow up with the with the tears. So you have, I mean, with the wheat, you have wheat and you have weed. They grow up at the same time. And just about when it's time to harvest, here come the weed pulling up. And you can't pull either one because you pull both. Because their root systems are intertwined. So God has to do surgery himself. So this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to open the altar. If you need prayer, this is a real, this is, if you want it, this is where it is. I'm not going to pump you, I'm not going to prod you, but if I spoke to you tonight and you want to be free, you want to be delivered, man, woman, boy, or girl, it does not matter. There is no age at this altar call. If you want the Lord tonight, I encourage you to come running down to this altar. Come running down to this altar. Yeah. If you want to be delivered, if you want to be free, if you want to be free,